But you can't answer the question of what's a good life scientifically. You can't. Not, I, can say, I can say what will make you feel a certain way. But whether that's good, I'm, let me give you an example. You talked about happiness. Mm -hmm. There are some people who've lived very unhappy lives that religiously you would evaluate as very good lives. I mean, Rabbi Akiva at the end of his life was not happy. Right? I mean, he was, he was martyred. But if you were to bring Rabbi Akiva back to life and say, would you say that the end of your life was good or bad, he would say, I have no doubt, painful but good. And if you said to him, but what about scientifically? He would say, well, scientifically, I was being burned alive. But you can't evaluate the, my life scientifically. And in fact, I just want to give one little sermonic coda here. <laughs> Anybody? Just one. Just one. Yeah. just one for the moment. OK. <laughs> How could you know me so quickly? Uh, yeah. um, so um, anybody who has children or who believes that they're doing something important in this world or who works in difficult circumstances to bring water to villages or food to hungry people would say that the idea that you could scientifically demonstrate a good life is worse than empty. It's a mockery. OK, well, that, that, that's good. I, I see that the term happiness is a little too effete to capture what I'm after here. I, I'm talking about well-being. I'm talking about all of the factors that we recognize that, that correspond to the good life. And, and I'm certainly. Uh, open to the possibility that we have yet to fully characterize the good life religiously, philosophically, and certainly scientifically. I mean, this is an open conversation. The question is, do you ever have to believe anything on insufficient evidence to explore this terrain, to become truly? Uh, and what is sufficient evidence? Well, it's, it's the kind of evidence everyone in this room demands on any subject other than religion. I mean, there, there are nuances here. We can, we, it, it takes a lot of work to, to rise to the standard of scientific evidence. But um, science is the one language game we are playing where we get really straight and rigorous about what constitutes evidence, where there's a process of peer review, uh, where you have a lot of smart people trying to prove you wrong, and where you actually win points by proving yourself wrong. And this is not what religions are up to. Religions are not. Uh, falsifiable in this way. And I think you used a phrase that I, I thought was very um, useful to frame this. You, you talked about what uh, used to be and what must be, I think was your phrase. And I think we should reflect on what used to be, because our religions come to us out of a tradition, in many cases, of, of, of human sacrifice. I mean, this a human sacrifice was a, virtually a cultural universal. This is where we come from. These are the roots of religion. This is, it has been not, uh, it's been by no means rare for a child to be born into this world only to find that he is being raised by religious maniacs who think that the best way to keep the sun on its course or to cure the king's venereal disease is to bury or butcher or burn him alive as an offering to an imaginary god. This, this, ha this is not just the Aztecs. Uh, this is the ancient Hebrews. Uh, human sacrifice is in the, the Hebrew Bible, uh, at times condemned, at times tacitly supported, at times demanded, and then, as you know in the story of Abraham, uh, uh, the demand is, is recanted. Um, this is, we, we come from, tradition, from generations of people who did, who did not know a damn thing about the causes of events in the world that really concern them, the spread of disease, the, the failure of crops, the weather. Um, and so religious discourse has changed. We're not sacrificing people uh, happily now. But it has changed by virtue of progress from the outside. I mean, certain, certain modes of operation are no longer tenable. When you can get a weather report on the evening news, you no longer have to sacrifice a child in a vain attempt to control the weather.